Okay, so here we are working on this fella right here. So this is a Sega Dreamcast that I just bought it online as broken. And this is the Dreamcast that will hopefully occupy that black case that I got. I'm not sure how interesting this video is going to be. And as you guys know, I'm very unprofessional. I don't have good lighting. I don't know what the f I'm doing. So, you know, I don't really spend much money on a setup here. I haven't done a project in a while because as many of you guys probably know, I've been recovering from several back surgeries. So I haven't really been able to work on a project in a while. So like I said, this is a Sega Dreamcast that is supposed to not work. A couple things that I want to just make clear. And that is that I do have what should be a working GD-ROM. And this was sourced from another Dreamcast that I, I already put a GD-EMU in, but that's not the one that I want to have it in. I actually want to have that in the black console. Um, this one's not in great condition. Uh, there are some, you know, there's some scratches on it. I don't know, maybe I could work on that. I don't know if I'll keep this shell or not. Uh, one thing that was, you know, that's, that's important for this mod, as I'm sure anyone that's ever looked at any of this stuff online, and, and you know that I have a perfect 720p f***ing uh, camera, because, you know, that's how we f***ing do things around here. Here is the Sega Dreamcast in question. And uh, here we go. We open that. And everything looks pretty decent in here. I mean, obviously, you know, when we fire it up, we're going to see. Uh, and like I was just talking about, the region... Now, this was a sticker that came in the box of the black console, which I'll take another look at again later. Uh, making sure that I have a one right here for the GD EMU. Let's, um, I'm not going to take this apart. I'm going to get some power to this thing and plug it in and get some video to this thing. The video cable doesn't fit very snug. I wonder why that is. Huh. That's really strange. Plug the controller in. So, all right, the smoke test here, plug it in, or I'm sorry, turn it on and we can see. Okay, cool and select the date. Obviously the battery's dead. So let me turn it off and I'll open it up. And I'm gonna stick in a NFL 2K. First thing I'm gonna do is listen. Okay, you definitely hear the grinding. Oh, I thought I did. No, that's not spinning. All right, so if I stick it up like that, close it. All right, so the disc starts to spin. So I have it up like this and close the lid. If I open it, okay, so the disc is, a, is definitely trying to spin. I definitely can smell what appears to be like old cigarette smoke. All right, so let's do the good old fashioned, take a Q-tip here and uh, I'm gonna do some of the very simple stuff, even though I'm pretty highly confident this isn't gonna do anything. Just rub some alcohol on top of the lens. Since I smell cigarette smoke, I'm gonna guess that she is not very clean inside. And the laser is probably just burnt out. That's an extremely common situation with the Sega Dreamcast. So I may just be SOL. Uh, I may be able to try to adjust the laser, but there's no guarantee that's going to do anything. So with that adjusted, I'm going to, you guys can see NFL 2K. I'm going to snap the disc in and I'm going to stick it all the way up. That way we can tell if it's spinning or not. Let's power it up. Okay, so we, I don't hear the Dreamcast sound. Okay, so typically, my experience when you don't hear the Dreamcast sound, then there's something wrong with the GD-ROM. So let's do this. Let's open this baby up. So we have a couple of pluses. One thing I didn't check was if it was outputting sound, but it definitely outputs video, and that's good. And the controller port seems to work, which is also good. So I'm going to start taking this thing apart. So, you know, obviously, if you've ever taken these things apart, they're not too terribly difficult. And I'll probably just do a little bit of cleaning as I do the taking apart because this thing's kind of dirty. I remember one time I took a uh, Dreamcast. I forget if it was a console or a controller. I think it may have been both actually that I found at a thrift store. And inside of it, I found the remnants of what was once spiders. I saw a bunch of dead spiders and a bunch of old spider eggs and like sacks where the spiders used to live. It was fucking nuts. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. All right, start working on 
see what this baby looks like inside. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't get my hands on a complete. Like I said, the uh, initial smoke testing seemed pretty good. Come here, screw. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, last one. Since it looks like it tried to spin, I'm guessing it's getting power. So I'm hoping it's not a power supply issue. Uh, not that, at least at the time of this recording, the power supplies for these are not super expensive, but still, just one of those things you just don't wanna fuss with. You'd rather work with the parts that you have. Okay, cool. So now, let's go ahead and take off the top. One of the things that's also good uh, to look for, you get yourself a console that's either untested or broken or not working is, has somebody fucked with it before? Let's take a look. <sighs> there is a lot of, even though I just blew on it, which would have changed its condition a little bit, but, see if we can document some of this initial condition. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up like my eye is, but there's hairs in there. See, there's a, there's a nice chunk of hair in there. There is some cobwebs in there. Not that I would be expecting that to be causing a majority of the problem. So we got the 3.3 volt um, GD-ROM. So, and let's see what else we got over here. Um, it would benefit us to watch this thing roll with the top off. Now, of course, we need to be careful to not touch any of the power stuff there with the top off. So I'm going to try to not hurt myself here, but I do want to see how it's going to behave. This is wet. I'm gonna move the wet thing out of the equation. And I'm gonna plug my power in somewhere where I can reach it a little bit easier. So if I have to yank it out, I can yank it out without accidentally touching the board. Okay, so that's in there. Um, there's a little nipple back here that you have to hold down to kind of fool it into thinking that the top is shut down. I'm gonna do that. Pushing this back and turn the power on. All right, the disc is spinning. And the Dreamcast is playing. The disc is still spinning. Now before, it actually didn't even get this far before. All right, now it stopped. Now we're at the main menu. Okay, power off. Okay, that is pretty indicative of a laser that is either dead or dying. So, but uh, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap this out with a GD-ROM that I know works. So just for the hell of it, I'm going to just do a little bit of debugging here and I'm gonna pull out this existing GD-ROM unit and I just want, it's really hard for me to frame this so that you can see it and I can see it. There's a screw in the back here. See, right there. You see that? Uh, uh, cheap shitty light. Right there. Okay, you see it. You're like, invest in some fucking lighting. Yes, I should. You're right, I should. So what's interesting is, when we first powered this thing up, it was acting like uh, there was no power coming into the GD-ROM. Now I'm gonna have to go back and check the video, but usually when you, you turn the console on and you don't hear the Dreamcast uh, music, typically that's one of two problems. Either, well, from my experience anyway, from working on broken Dreamcast that I've found over the years, it's um, the GD-ROM is completely dead and it's not getting any power. Or this little nipple back here is either broken or it's not being recognized that it's that it's closed. Like for, exa for example, like if I, now that I have all those those three screws out and I lift the GD-ROM out, which I'm gonna have to do anyways if, if I'm gonna try to work on this. Gotta probably, the, uh, the, the, the little port is over here. So there's, that's where the resistance is gonna come from. Don't, don't pull from up here. I just try to pull from the bottom part and just wiggle it. You see there's the port right there. So I'm gonna set this aside. And like I said, I have one that I know works. <sighs> And she is, she's a little bit dirty. I also just happen to have a Sega, a Sega Saturn disc assembly here. Here is a GD-ROM assembly that at least it was working very recently. So I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna screw it in. I'm just gonna pop it in here and just see if, all right, it should, it should just be in there. I shouldn't have to do anything else. And just for safety reasons, I'm gonna just whoop, stick the top on just to avoid any accidental connectivity with the power. All right, we'll plug in the AV and 
Let's get this thing set up. So my hope is that this will boot the game. It's my hope. Okay, so it looks like the console with a working GD-ROM is salvageable, which is fantastic news. So, but at least we know the console's in good shape, and we do know that if we're able to to uh, to save the GD-ROM, we should be able to save the console, the exact console that I bought. In it's in the condition that I bought it in and use it and um, uh, oh God, I keep forgetting about the fucking game in there. So this is the super cool all black custom made shell that I got. The lighting sucks. I apologize. But so since we know that this works with the GD-ROM, what we'll do is we'll just disassemble this and put its contents inside of here. So hopefully that doesn't take us uh, too much time. But let's try to be nice with our screws here. So this belongs to the GD-ROM, which I will set aside. Here's the case screws. All right, so start disassembling the console. Uh, the first thing I'll do is disconnect this power and unscrew here. All right, so we got the power screw. Here's another power screw. Try to keep all this stuff together. So those two should be the same or close. And power supply lifts right up. All right, then we got this little plastic piece that goes under the power supply. So I'm gonna put these aside here and the screws that held it together next to it. Power switch, take that off, take that off. All right, so here's the power switch that aside so the next piece I want to remove is the actually wait the next piece I'll take out is the fan the fans being held in by this guy here and this guy here so in that black case that I got none of these screws came with it so and then to unplug this let me see if I got I'm actually getting an allergic reaction from all of the dust that's in here that's pretty fucking awful so for the controller board now I think I just need to just run through these screws so I got one screw, two screw, and then there's gonna be two more. There's three screws, four screws. So we could do a little mod later um, where we maybe change the LED color or something cool like that. We'll see. All right, and of course there's the ribbon cable here, which connects the um, the controller port to the, to the main board. Uh, I will disconnect it from the main board, which is this side here. So just be very careful. Actually, let me see. Can I get this to slide up? Is there one screw that I'm missing? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm yanking on the face plate, but I actually need to be... So instead of yanking on the face, I got to yank on the board. So the board pulls up, and then once I have the board pulled up, I'm going to very gently... I don't want that blue part to fall off. So very gently... Pull the ribbon cable out and these can like rot because they've been in there for so long i've had those ribbon cables fall apart and i mean you could usually source them but they're not always that easy to source so let me then put these aside and put all these screws together so then my next course of action is to remove the screws that hold the main board together so you can see that on the far side here where the power supply was these two here are gold and the rest of them are black so i'm just going to try to make a mental note of that so this one here black and my fingers are getting mighty sticky and that cigarette smell is definitely making itself known and a magnetic screwdriver is always always your friend in these situations all right so i got all of these out the exception of the ones here on the far, if you're staring at the console with the controller ports facing you, it's on the far left side here. Those are the two gold ones. Take those out. Those are the ones that will be resting directly underneath the power supply. There's a little tiny bit of rusting happening that I can see, nothing too bad. But as I get further down, I'm starting to see more and more hairs and uh, I have horrible allergies. So, you know, hairs and I don't, I don't even want to know what else. Okay, so this shield should 
come up and uh, I don't want to cut myself. So here we go. So we got the shield here and the board. It's actually attached to it. So there's the bottom of the Sega Dreamcast board. So here is the main board with the top RF shield. And here is the bottom RF shield with some crusty sh on the outside. That's awesome. And here is the bottom shell of the white case. The top shell of the white case will put them back together loosely and put this thing aside. Just put this down here. I'm not gonna do a deep clean, but I definitely don't like seeing stuff like this. I don't even know what that is. Like, what the f is that? Was there a spill in here? Was there, let's see. I don't know what that is. We've got these two pads here. They've seen better days. I'm just gonna give it a nice, just a quick one over. So let's see here, this sh right here, I saw this on the case too, whatever this stuff was. So this would have been, I mean, it looks like some type of corrosion because I could see some of it on the bottom of the board too. I don't know, maybe it got wet or something a long time ago. Doesn't look to be too serious, I guess. The console was booting up. So I believe one of the uh, things holding this together is the thermal padding, which, oh, there we go. So if you just kind of tug on it, eventually the top will come off and then there, there's the thermal pad right there. There's one right there. Can't see it pulled it the wrong way there's one there and then you see that there's one at the top that's what makes that top piece a little harder to pull off so I'm gonna give this a quick rub down so I could see on the board and it lines up with where that so you can see some uh, it looks like this thing may have been exposed to some liquid at some point uh, I mean when I did that test earlier it didn't really seem to affect it at all but um, if you take a look here, you can see that there looks to be some rust coming down this line here. And it gets kind of worse as you go to the end. Um, now that's the part that was touching the main board. And this is what it was touching up here. Is it, so this is what it was actually on top of. So you can see rust there. Um, and on the other side of the Sega Dreamcast board, there appears to be some as well. And inside of the case, let me get the, let me get the white box. You can see on that side, you see, there's some of this shit right here. So I don't know, did some water get in here? Possibly. Um, it's possible that a long time ago or whatever, some water got in there, caused a little bit of wetness to happen. And um, did it cause some physical damage, perhaps? Uh, enough damage to render this thing useless? Very unlikely. This thing looked like it was playing just fine when I was able to test it. I'm not too concerned about it. Let's take a closer look at the board. So this is all that powers the Sega Dreamcast. And I'm just gonna try to rub down this area over here that has some of that damage on it with some alcohol and just see if I can clean up some of it. I don't really think it's gonna make a difference, but at the very least, I will feel better. I mean, it already looks a little bit better. Go to the other side, I can already see over here. I mean, it looks like the board was pretty well protected from whatever tried to come and attack it. All right, I mean, that's pretty much all I feel like doing to that, other than maybe clean out some of the ports a little bit. Now, I'm just gonna start to put this back together just ever so gently. You can see it, you can see the GD-ROM hole, the power hole, and then obviously make sure the screw holes line up. And then on the bottom, we're going to encapsulate it. There we go. All right, so for now, I'm okay with setting this aside as it is. I think it's okay. So there's the main guts of the Sega Dreamcast right there. I bet you if you never looked at it, you would have never believed it was that small. Giggity. So I'm gonna start to slowly piece things into my console and then I, the other pieces I can start to clean as I put them in, but the main board is gonna be the first thing that goes in. So here is my Sega Dreamcast custom box nice sleek black very nice looking only thing 
I have right now is inside I have my NTSC U sticker badge that I'll stick on the bottom at some point. So I need to stick this somewhere where I won't scratch it. I'm already getting dust on it even though all I've done is open it up and look at it a couple of times. I'm also going to pull out the modem attachment and put that aside as well. Now as we know it should go like this because the back ports will go in here and then the rest of the console will just slide right in. Hopefully, let's see. All right, make sure the back pieces, they line up. Now, what I should have probably done is while I had this out, it's not too late to do it, but kind of clean these out a bit. All right, so now as you recall, we had the two golden screws were over here by the power supply. So I'm gonna go stick those in. And because there is thermal pieces in between, I'm gonna try to make sure that I put these in, not painfully tight, but you know, just tight enough to make sure that I'm squeezing the board in there. So there's, the, there's that, now I'm just gonna kind of circle around. And what I'm doing is before I put each screw in, I'm just gonna clean it off a little bit with this little piece of uh, Clorox towel. So this is where it really tests the quality of the, the build of this, sh of this shell, is how well these screws go in there, giggity. And so far, I've only had trouble with the first black screw, but that one went in pretty good. Cleaning off another one, just making sure that I get all the gunk off, that I don't bring it up in here. This one's going in pretty good. All right, got another screw over here. The fan, I'm gonna clean the fan. Make sure we got a nice good fan, at least a decent fan. Clean up some of this gunk that's in here. All right, rub this board down a little bit. So with this board, obviously it's gonna need a little bit of work and um, it'll be something that I get to at some point. This battery right here is dead. So I can just uh, desolder this battery and either replace it with one that can be either replaced or uh, I should be able to replace it with one that can be recharged by the console itself. Let's get this puppy in there. Yeah, there's some rust spots on the board that there's just really nothing that I can do much about. Let's get the controller port in there. This is always fun because you got to get it lined up with the front port. I think that's in there. All right, Let's see how well this gets driven in and how well it lines up. All right, so we got one, clean off another screw. Let's go with this outer one here. So these feel a little bit tight. I'm not sure if that's because I put this in wrong or if those screw holes are just a little tight. I'm not sure. Let me get my controller here, see how that feels. That feels pretty solid. All right, going down the line. So now we'll go to this hole. Yeah, so these screw holes, I think these are just a little snug. All right, let me make sure that these wires for the fan don't get caught up in this last one over here. So the controller board should be in nice and snug. Like I said, I'm gonna have to take this out at some point and work on this battery. Uh, like, I, like I said, one of the good news is, 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 is uh, the control board works. It's on, you know, without any issue. A lot of times when it doesn't work, it's because of this capacitor fuse right here. This one right here. It's really easy to remove and fix that. I've had to do that a bunch of times. So now if we can stick this back in nice and easy. All right, that should have been the winner. Okay, so with the fan, the fan should fit in something like this, where this angles up like that. And I got my two little teeny tiny screws right here. I mean, so far so good. Everything is sort of falling into place. And it's nice to feel a little bit of weight on this thing, because um, when I first got it, I felt no weight on it. Are you, ca okay, it caught. That took a second to catch. Okay, I have the the plastic for the power supply, which I'm going to stick on. So there's like a little hole right there. There's a little nipple thing right there. So, perfect. I don't really want to introduce any liquid to the power supply. So I'm just gonna take a dry brush here. Just kind of any dust that looks crazy. And you know, other than some hair, power supply looks fine. And if you notice too, um, there's this 12 volt line right here. If you do the um, GDEMU mod, that 12 volt line isn't used anymore in the console because the GD-ROM doesn't need it anymore. So there's a, there's a mod that you can get or that you can do yourself that will 
remove the need for that. And um, some people do that and some people add some additional plastic for cooling the system down because once you take the GD-ROM out, the system draws more power than it needs. That's what that's all about. Actually, you know what? Let me, um, before I do that, let me add the, let me take the power supply back out. Let me stick the power switch back in. The power switch should go something like that, sideways like that. All right. So like I was saying with that 12 volt situation, I think there's something that you can do with some resistors, which is what I'm gonna try to do. So first I'm gonna get this thing working with the GD-ROM and then I'm gonna swap it with a GD-EMU in another project. So project one, get this motherfucker working. The main goal here was to see how pleasant was the transferring of console guts from one system to another. Let me plug in the, well, actually before I do that, I gotta screw in the power. So I got my two screws for my power. So there's one there. And I, I believe the thing, w I'll have to try it out, but I think that you bridge the 12 volt and the ground, something like that. I forget, I'm gonna have to do some more research on that. All right this screw in oops sorry back here i mean not not like you could can see anything anyways with my uh my 240p i should i should run these through a um upscaler my um frame meister so here is what we got so far this is the black console that i've been putting together out of the um working parts of a dead console so let's stick a what should be a working GD ROM in here, and I'll mess around with that other GD ROM at some other point. I was going to try and fix that tonight, but not fix it, but you know, adjust the um, adjust the laser tonight. But you know, it's just, I, I, I kind of lost. Oh geez, I, I have to turn it this way because the in the other console, this is a, it's white, so you can see the little nipple that this thing slides into. Here you can't. All right, so that should be slid into place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and screw that in. So I got the one screw there, and I got a screw in the back here, and then I got a screw in the front here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on. Oh, see, it's got some nice weight to it now. That's great. Let's put these screws in it. So let's start with the modem screw over on this side. Let me get this one over here. The bottom of it's already got shit on it from just being on this fucking table. Let's get this one over here. And the last one's over there on that corner. All right, so let's take a quick look. Open. Looks pretty cool. Close. All right, so before I start fucking with the modem, let's take it for a quick test spin and I don't know if it's just gotten darker or what seems a lot darker in here so here's what she looks like so far let me turn her to the side since uh, it is black it is gonna show more dust and stuff so I don't have the modem stuff figured out yet but I'll figure it out I think the fan is set up right it should be blowing up if I have it backwards then whatever I'll fix it everything back here looks okay This looks great. And now that it's actually got some guts in it, it feels more like a real console. Um, it's one thing I was a little bit worried about was that it didn't have a very robust feel to it. But now that it's got stuff in it, it does have a nice, good, real feel to it. So I'll just um, start plugging some shit in. So let's do that. Let's give it some video. Let's give it some power. Let's plug it in and see what happens. First off, there's no game in there, but let's see what happens. Hmm, nothing. Okay. Let me put a game in there. Okay, so I'm not seeing any video. Now, last time. All 
Alright, there we go. Last time I just... I think there's something with the AV output. Okay. So I, I think that there's something with the AV out. I think it just needs to be cleaned. So let me uh, let me let me do that again. So if I turn this off and I give it a nice boot up again, all right. I get the date, which is fine. That's the all right. Sounds like the GD-ROM is reading the disc, and it's reading the game. So the all-black console is alive! Holy shit. And she looks stunning. So this is what the Sega Dreamcast should have looked like. It should have been an all-black console just like this. Um, I need to take a break because I've been working on this for a long time today. And uh, I got to go... Actually, you know what? I don't want to take a break. Time out. Let me take an unbreak. I need to figure out this shit with the... Fucking, um, the modem. Okay, so we know that the console works. Uh, I believe that there's something going on with this... AV port because it looked I think it's been giving me trouble a few times today, but that's okay It seems to be like just a loose connection or something, but I don't actually know how to disassemble this modem I'm guessing it's easy, but let's um, let's find that out. Let's find out how easy it actually is How easy how easy is disassembling this modem? All right, let me get a nice alcohol swab in this AV port just make sure it's nice and clean and dry it out. At least I know that it works and it's not a systemic problem on the board itself. If that was the case, then I would be pretty pissed. Okay, so all that this all that this um, kit comes with is this little board. So how difficult could... Can I speak English? Is that allowed? How difficult can this be? So it must be something where I just unscrew these and it comes out. So I must unscrew these and then just put this in there. So let's just see what happens when I do that. So... Because before I go to bed tonight, I want this console to be whole. Let's see. I want to be very careful when I take this apart because I've never done this before. So I don't know what is inside here. Wait. Oh, okay. Well, I just wiggled it and it came out. If I wiggle it, it's a little dusty. I mean, not that I'll... I mean, I don't know. I'm, I might set up a ras um, raspberry Pi, which I'm going to call it, a, uh, a dream pie. I'm just going to hold it and let it dangle down. And then I'm going to try to slide this in the hole. It's kind of hard to do it while I'm talking. Oh god, I'm so scared. So what am I missing exactly? Alright, so how, how would you put this back in here? What? So push this there, push this there. Wait, how the fuck did I do that? Push forward, it goes in. That's what I was doing. Put that there. Put that there. Push forward. It go Is it Really? God damn it. Okay, well I fucking got it in there, but after a bunch of trying and I even scuffed up the edge a little bit. Well, fuck me. I, I had to practice putting it back into the white one first. <laughs> Okay, that was a lot fucking easier than I thought it was. It just took me a, a few practice tries. So, um, if you're gonna do that, what I recommend that you do is take it out of the original one, put it back, take it out, put it back, do that a couple of times. Make sure that you feel comfortable doing that before you do it in the other one because I didn't know what I was doing the first time and I accidentally scuffed it a little bit. Which, um, of course, I'm a little disappointed about, but, you know, what can I do about it? I mean, I, I probably could ask, um, you know, the person that makes these for a placement one, but you know, it's probably not that important. So now I have a black modem and I'll put the white shell there and put it all together. Look at that. Look at that. Now that my friends is how babies are made. Now I'm gonna call this a night. I'm gonna call this a success. And then I'll probably play this thing for a little while. You know, get, get to enjoy her a little bit. And maybe I'll come back. Maybe after I buy a couple of extra parts. 
and I'll stick a um, GD emulator in this thing, which I actually already have in another one of my consoles, which is where this GD ROM came from. But look at that. I mean, come on. It looks like it belongs there. Thank you for watching, anyone that stuck around and watched this, because this was pretty long and boring, but it was fun for me. I'm really glad that I did this. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, so far, I recommend buying this thing, uh, transferring your, your guts from a console over to this. Pretty simple. The other GD-ROM that I got, um, I'll probably f*** around with this and see if I can get it to working by adjusting the pot on it. And yeah, alright, well thank you so much, and I'll see you guys hopefully some other time. Hopefully in the next one when I install the GDEMU into this specific console right here.